Okay, we are back. Um, if these look familiar, these are the three VRV condensers, the multi condensers that we pulled the like 50 odd kilos of refrigerant out of so the, the mech guys could do their do their thing. We're back to basically pressure test and commission them up again today. Um, but before we jump into that, I do have to go reclaim a little uh, like three kilowatt head. So I'll take you over and we'll do that first and then we'll jump into these. This is the old girl here, an old uh, Sanyo, you can see, in great condition. Also, love the power feed run directly from that one. <laughs> anyway, it's an old R32 one, they're gonna replace it with a new one and run a new feed, so quickly get the gas out of it. I was mistaken, it's actually 410. <laughs> there you go. done here now refrigerant's all gone spark is disconnecting the power now so we'll move on to those brds here we are we are back um pulled out my bottles got my nitro my oil ready everything else is ready to go um yeah, we will basically run this, we'll, we'll pressure test this, get it on back, and hopefully get it up and running by the end of the day. Um, <laughs> you you wouldn't know that I came back and cleaned these coals already, would you? Um, so, okay, for those of you who didn't watch the other video, basically I had to reclaim all the gas because they were doing a reno um, inside and moving some things. Uh, so basically I reclaimed most of the gas. So I left about, you know, 25 to 50 kPa in each unit. So I reclaimed it to around 50 kPa, closed off my valves, and then, so they would basically not be exposed to atmosphere. Um, now, technically that means I could just reclaim, or sorry, I could just vac out the, the line set, but um, I figured I've basically taken most of it out. Um, I'd rather just open it all up, vac it all out, so at least I know when I leave it's gonna be okay. Um, so yeah, basically I've got my, my gauges on, we'll get this thing under a pressure test. So I've gone around and opened up all of the ball valves. Um, I've applied power to the indoors, so now I'm gonna apply power to the outdoors, let them run through their little process, and then we'll throw it into the uh, to the refrigerant recovery mode or, or vacuum mode, basically to open up all the valves in the entire system. Now we'll wait the uh, 10 or so minutes until this thing confirms that everything's okay, and we'll come back and we'll go from there. While we're waiting, we'll um, change over my vacuum pump oil. The test can take upwards of like 20 minutes or whatever, so just keeping myself busy. So it's been about 35 minutes now and it hasn't progressed past the first setup stage. So basically those lights are still flashing, so it's checking power and then it goes through and does a whole bunch of other checks as well. But so I've made a few phone calls, turns out that um, the, they actually removed an indoor head. So what my theory is, is that it's basically looking for that unit and that unit's not there. So I'm gonna go up to the branch box and disconnect it from there. So lucky for me, the branch boxes are actually external on the roof. So this is the one closest to over there. So I just need to work out which set of pipes um, is going to that, or was going to that unit over there. Okay, pull the cover off. So my. My theory is that basically they've, um, when they've removed a head, they probably just haven't uh, tied in the wires because the communication wires are basically daisy chained. So if they haven't, or if they've just cut the wires or whatever, then basically 
there'll be no communication coming. So <coughs> let's have a look. We're getting a 16 volt signal coming from the outdoor. So these wires down here are all going to the indoors. So I'll test between there, nothing. Uh, unit two, nothing. Unit three, nothing. And unit four, nothing. Okay, so again, it should be pretty, oh, I'm hoping it should be pretty straightforward. So they've just got the capping there. Hopefully we'll be able to remove a couple of screws, pull the wire up, connect it, um, and then we'll be good to go, hopefully. Something tells me I might be on the money here. Found that and that and this looks like new silicon, so. So I found this little junction box. We'll get the tape off there and we'll have a look inside. Tested, good to go. We'll get these wires connected and we'll start the unit back up okay so done all the electrics down there I'm gonna turn this back on I'm gonna go down and reset everything so it all starts again and then we'll come up and test make sure we're getting the voltage here so, we'll flick off powder our isolators for our indoors uh, sorry outdoors um, I'll just give it a sec So I wasn't getting a voltage again at that, um, the, the, the 16 volt comms voltage. So I've come over to this other branch box just to confirm that I'm going down the right path. So just so we can double check, right? So that's power coming from the outdoor. So we got that 16 volt. Now this is, these are our comms wires going to our indoors, right? So across there and I have a voltage, right? So I've still got another break in the wire somewhere. So, I uh, ended up having to call Dakin Tech Support on this one because I was I was scratching my head um, trying to work out what was going on. I, I thought I originally had a break in the wire, so it turns out, I mean, I was half correct, right? So we did have a break in the wire. Um, and some of you guys who work on VRBs may have picked up on this earlier in the video. Um, I assumed that because I had a break in the wire, that's why I wasn't getting my 16 volts here. Now, the guy, the Dakin Tech Sport bloke has said that regardless of if there's a break in the wire, I should still have 16 volts uh, on the terminal, right? I think he said at, le at, 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 um, at least on terminal A, right? If that's the first in the unit. So I, had, I didn't have 16 volts anywhere along here. So he has suggested that potentially there's an issue with this board, right? Now, <clears throat> this was obviously all running hunky-dory when I left the last time. The only thing that's changed is that potentially, now, when they were doing their works on that unit over there, everything was dead, right? There was no power to anything. So what I'm thinking has happened is that because um, those two, uh, like, I, I don't know if I got it properly on camera, I was more just, try to show the break um but what what had happened was it, it looks like potentially it had actually broken the seal and maybe there was making slight contact in there so potentially what could have happened is that when i've when i've come back here and turned power on that has shorted and maybe taken out this board again if anyone's got any information on this I, i'm still you know um I, i'm still on my journey on learning about VRVs. I'm doing a lot of reading, but there's still a lot to go. And, you know, things like this definitely, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you pull your hair out sometimes, but at least at this point, I, I now know a little bit more than when I first started. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna pull this board out and, and have a look at it. Cause I, I know it's got power going to it and I can see uh, a flashing light, but maybe something internally has happened. So anyway, you know, it, again, it's another one, another one of the reasons why I make these videos as well. You know, hopefully, someone can learn from my mistakes and save themselves. Oh shit, I don't know, it's been about two hours of me looking for more broken wires. So um, yeah, hopefully this might help someone in the future. All right, so I'll just show you. Got, so 245, that seems pretty high, but anyway, power coming in and now to test going to the board. I mean, we know we have it going to the board because there's no break in the wire, but anyway, we'll test it anyway. So there we go, confirm that the board has got power and there's a little LED down there flashing as well. Um, I did test across this fuse just before um, and that was fine. 
so yeah we'll, we'll disconnect power pull it off and see if we can see any burn marks so board looks fine man um yeah okay it's uh it's actually the following day um it's about i don't know quarter past six in the morning i I wasn't able to film as much of what happened yesterday as I would have liked. Um, the last two hours, we kind of had a bit of like a thunderstorm rolling through um, and I was a bit under the pump. So I was just trying to get as much done. So I'm gonna try and explain what <laughs> what I ended up working out um, yesterday. It was a bit of a bit of a, a learning experience to be honest, but basically I think I potentially even said it earlier in the video, but it, it just seemed like because I wasn't getting a fault and it was just flashing, um, the seven segment display was just flashing at me. It almost just seemed like it was waiting for that 14th unit, right? So I was going down the right path, but my way of going about it was was just, yeah, it was just, it was wrong, right? So I, I ended up, <clears throat> um, I ended up trying to bypass that uh, branch box to see if that would help. That didn't help, so I hooked that back up. Um, I ended up trying to. Um, ended up trying to re-address everything. Um, so, actually, hold on. I will pull this cover off and I'll show you what I mean. So up here, you can see it says BS3 long push for resetting the address when wiring is changed or an additional in indoor unit is installed, right? So I thought that I could do that to then get this, um, to try and forget that 14th indoor head that had been removed. Um, that didn't work and ended up, um, it ended up losing the master and slave programmings as well. So um, I then went down to try to put this into like forced master, forced slave, forced slave. That didn't work. Um, basically nothing I was doing was, was working the way that I thought that it should. Um, so I ended up actually getting uh, 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 the phone number of a, an ex Dakin tech um, who used to work for us, uh, name was Jason. Um, and he, yeah, massive shout out Max. He, he gave me a lot of help. Basically what we ended up doing was just a hard reset on the entire system. So the way you go about that, um, he was saying, is, is actually different on the VRV4s than the previous generations. So for these ones, um, I'll, I'll throw up a little screen grab as well so you can, so you can see it yourself. But basically you, you hold down the BS3 button. Uh, sorry, so you kill power to everything, hold down the BS3 button, um, turn power onto the outdoor unit for, and hold it for like 20 seconds. That goes into uh, that goes into a, basically starts to reset everything. Then you turn power onto the indoor units. Um, and after I did that, it basically, everything was fine. Um, and, and yeah, and basically since then I, I was able to put it into a, a evacuation mode, which is basically where we sat. I, I got that on last night um, and then put the, yeah, put, put my bin over it and, um, and have come back this morning. Uh, and my micron readings is, is sub 400. So absolutely stoked. Uh, I think we will, yeah, continue on uh, with the commissioning process. <laughs> I can't believe it, we're actually finally after putting nitro on the system. This storm coming in quick though. So just trying to do this real quick, but that's been sitting there. It has been raining a little bit, but looking pretty good. Fridge ingenuity or just stupidity? I guess only time will tell. Um, so I've got to get this thing up and running by around 10.30 tomorrow. So um, I'm going to try and get this thing on back overnight, at least to the first back. I'm going to come back pretty early tomorrow, um, but it's supposed to rain. So we've had thunder. It's kind of passed a little bit now. We had some thunder and lightning going off um, and it's supposed to storm again tonight. So I've got this bucket um, and I've kind of strapped it so that you can kind of see here, it's kind of forcing it down a little bit. Um, and I've tried to angle, you can kind of see there, I've tried to angle the the relief or the the, the vent basically the the fan the, oh man my, it's been a long day the fan so it's angling and shooting the air out there so uh all right so got my first bottle hooked up I'm charging now through the liquid so i've closed all the valves um plan of attack here is just maybe get one bottle which is about 17 and a half kilos in then we'll put it into a forced cooling or char um, refrigerant charging mode and we'll charge the rest like that so 11.2 in so just open up the suction line now get the rest in that way 16 and a half uh, kilos so throw this into a forced cooling mode now okay so just put it into a forced cooling or additional refrigerant charger I should say so it's all there on the board for you if you ever need to do that um, get the rest of the charge in 
second bottle on now. Just slowly charging again through the suction. Got the, uh, you can't really see that, but anyway. And now our third bottle's underway. It's a long and tedious process charging through the suction line, but we are getting there. Third bottle, eight kilos down. Now got the unit in test mode operation, so it's, it's up to T06. Uh, so it's sort of like a pipe leak check, but we are definitely, let's see if I can get my, anyway, 9.33, so I gotta be out of here in an hour. <laughs> well, ideally half an hour, so cutting it fine. T10, yep, here we go, we're all done. Perfect, man. Alrighty, let's uh, get these things to run on their own now. Man. This has been a, just a journey, dude. <laughs> um, so just a quick like rundown, basically. I've now put this thing through test mode, charged it up, and it's running by itself. It's getting a cooling call. It's not that hot inside. I think it says the room space is 22. I think it's supposed to get to 28 degrees, so whatever. Anyway, um, so <clears throat> this, <laughs> it will not be the last that you see of these three VRVs, because unless it's not me coming back to do it, but basically, um, the outdoor, uh, or the, what am I trying to say? The, the branch box, one of the branch boxes for the head that we removed, that one that we were looking at before, that is faulty. Um, so when I've done a hard reset to get this thing to, um, like readdress everything, it's forgotten those three heads over there. Cause it's obviously not getting any comms coming back. Um, so they needed this thing up and running today because they obviously they had a big meeting. I think there were about 300 people going to be in this library in about I don't know, half an hour. Um, so I we were able to obviously essentially bypass that, which is what I was trying to do in the first place, but we were able to bypass that. So now it's only running off uh, 10 heads. So it only recognizes 10 heads. So to replace that board, right, basically I have to reclaim all the gas again, replace that board, readdress it, vac everything out. Cause at the moment, those three heads over there um, are not vacked out. So, but they're not gonna turn on cause there's no comms coming back anyway. So yeah, chances are there's probably gonna be another video on these ones, uh, but that's the end of this one anyway. So literally as I was finishing up recording that, I. Uh, Got a call from the service manager. I will be back here Saturday to fix the board. Apparently they reckon they've they've got one um, express, so supposed to get here Friday. Uh, <laughs> that's gonna be fun. Anyway, it's a Saturday job, I guess. Uh, yeah, we'll get that all sorted.